Hello my friends, today we will take a look at the DJI Pocket 2. The original Osmo Pocket is still one of my most favorite cameras overall. It basically brought gimbal stabilization to the masses and it has proved to be a great tool for content creators. DJI Pocket 2 may look similar, but it is quite a different device. DJI has improved a lot of things with Pocket 2 and they also changed the basic concept a little bit. In this video we will take a look at the performance and the feature set of Pocket 2 and I will try to help you decide whether you should get one. DJI Pocket 2 basically consists of a pretty large 1 over 1.7 inch 64 megapixel sensor mounted on a tiny gimbal, which is mounted on a handle. The departure from the original concept is the lens. Pocket 2 uses a 20mm full frame equivalent f1.8 lens. I have always been a big fan of the whole Osmo Pocket concept. Gimbal still has a lot of advantages over other types of stabilization. It can keep the horizon leveled, it can smooth out movements, make precise panning, track an object, and so on. DJI made it possible to have all of that in your pocket, which is something that I really appreciate. Pocket 2 is a very small and very portable device, and it can really fit into a pocket. The build quality is also very decent. The gimbal assembly is metal. The handle part is plastic, but the plastics are pretty high quality and the whole device feels solid. Pocket 2 looks very similar to Osmo Pocket, but there are significant physical changes. The whole gimbal assembly is larger to accommodate the new lens and the larger sensor. Pocket 2 also has a new dedicated power button on the right side, which means that the function button has a new functionality. There is also a mounting point for a lanyard. An important improvement is that the bottom part can be removed and replaced with some mounts and accessories. The case that comes with Pocket 2 is completely new, but I will talk about that later. The biggest change for me personally is the field of view. Pocket 2 uses a 20mm equivalent lens. That is somewhere between the 26mm lens on Osmo Pocket 1 and 16mm on action cameras. Some of the users were asking for wider field of view and I think that 20mm is a good compromise. It still looks more classy than action camera footage and it is more suitable for POV filming and vlogging. My personal choice would be a little bit tighter field of view, but I do approve of 20mm lens. If you want that 26mm field of view, you can use digital zoom, but I will talk about that later. I will say right away that the output of DJI Pocket 2 did not disappoint me. It indeed combines that stabilization with excellent image quality. I have to say that I wasn't a fan of small high resolution sensors until now. Pocket 2 uses a quad buyer 64 megapixel sensor, which works in 16 megapixel bint mode most of the time. Fortunately, DJI has done a great job on video processing. Pocket 2 shoots 4K video up to 60p and it looks great. In terms of the details and overall image quality, it is among the best consumer cameras on the market. Unlike with almost every other consumer camera, the standard color setting is not that terribly oversharpened. The colors in standard mode are also quite neutral. The footage straight out of the camera looks very nice. I will still use the D-Cinelac setting though. It captures more dynamic range, the sharpening is very reasonable and the colors remind me of Blackmagic. The low light performance is also very decent for this type of device. It uses a relatively large 1 over 1.7 inch sensor and bright f1.8 lens, so it can let in a lot of light. Thanks to that excellent image quality, Pocket 2 is very suitable as a B camera for larger productions. The new feature of Pocket 2 is zoom. This is a so-called loseless zoom, which means that you are always getting 4K resolution. It basically just changes the pixel binning rate. It is similar to clear image zoom on Sony mirrorless cameras. The decrease in image quality is still there of course, especially in less than ideal light conditions. 
If you zoom to 1.3 times, you will get the same field of view as with the original Osmo Pocket. The image quality is still pretty good up to 1.3 times, 1.5 times is somewhat usable, but beyond that it is only suitable for documenting. If you want even wider field of view, DJI makes a 0.75 times lens, which provides 15mm equivalent. I am very impressed by the performance of this lens. The sharpness is excellent even in the corners. The image quality with this lens can compete with the best action cameras. It definitely increases the versatility of Pocket 2. Regarding the stills, Pocket 2 can shoot very impressive 64 megapixel JPEG stills. That little lens can't fully render 64 megapixels of course, but it still makes a big difference in terms of details. The image quality is definitely comparable with the best smartphones on the market. It can also shoot 16 megapixel RAWs. These capture a very solid dynamic range and give you a lot of flexibility for post-production. Besides the 3x3 panorama mode that we already know from Osmo Pocket 1, there is also a new 180 degree panorama. Here it takes 3 stills horizontally. That is in my opinion a very useful mode and the stitching is perfect. Regarding the efficiency of the stabilization, it is excellent. Static shots, panning and basically any kind of movement smoothing works great. A big surprise for me is the walking. That was a weakness of Osmo Pocket 1. Both are 3 axis gimbals, so the up and down movements are not stabilized. Walking with Pocket 2 looks so much better. It has wider field of view, which is always easier to stabilize, so that is the main reason for that. The computer game walking effect is so much less visible that I would have guessed that there is some kind of digital stabilization. As far as I know, that is not the case. There are just two follow speed options. Slow follow and fast follow, but I found that to be sufficient. You can also use the gimbal in portrait mode simply by turning the device. I also haven't noticed any strange behavior, so I am very happy with the gimbal on Pocket 2. Pocket 2 uses a hybrid autofocus system and I can say that it works very well. In easier situations, there are no issues at all. It is calm and reliable, so there is no hunting or refocusing without a reason. In low light, it still works well in easier situations. If you wanted to focus from close distance to infinity in low light, there will be some hunting. Overall, the autofocus is more than sufficient for intended purposes. Pocket 2 also uses new tracking algorithm. The tracking works great overall. It is very reliable and also very smooth unless you move very quickly across the frame. It can track your face automatically and you can track any object by tapping on the screen. This is another advantage of Pocket 2 over action cameras. Regarding the handling, it is basically the same as with the Pocket 1, so it fits pretty well in the hand and I don't really have anything to complain about. Pocket 2 also has a new dedicated power button on the right side. That means that the function button has a new functionality. When you hold it down, it activates the lock mode, which means that the camera will keep pointing in one direction. This was only possible with the controller wheel on Osmo Pocket 1, so it is a very welcome upgrade. Pocket 2 can also be turned on with the right button and the startup time is extremely fast that way. Single press switches shooting modes, double press resets the gimbal position and holding the button engages gimbal lock mode. The left button is the shutter button, so it starts video recording or it takes stills. A novelty is the mini controller stick which is included in the box. That gives you an extra button and a joystick. The button switches follow mode, so it is very useful. The joystick can control zoom or gimbal position. The follow speed of the joystick movement can be adjusted and it is very smooth and slow at the slowest setting, so big thumbs up for that. 1.08 inch screen is pretty small and you will mostly be able to use it for composing your shots and maybe for checking exposure. Brightness and sharpness is also ok, so even though you won't be able to check the focus, it is ok for intended purposes. 
Of course, you can always connect it to your smartphone if you need larger screen. The user interface is probably as good as it can be at that screen size. You can still change all of the settings on that screen. It uses the usual swipe gestures and the main menu is very well organized. The case that comes with the Pocket 2 is completely new. The device is held inside just by friction. Taking Pocket 2 out of the case can be a bit tricky, but I got used to it after some time. The reason for that is that the new case can fit Pocket 2 with the do-it-all handle or controller wheel attached. That is an improvement over Osmo Pocket 1 case. There is also storage space for smartphone connectors and wide-angle lens inside of the case. I think that the case is pretty good overall. I am also looking forward to alternatives from PGY Tech and Scotty Make Stuff. Pocket 2 uses the same 875 mAh power battery as the Osmo Pocket 1. According to my testing, you should get about 100 minutes of continuous 4K 20p video recording on a single charge. That is in my opinion pretty solid for 875 mAh power battery. I am also pretty sure that there will be some options for a battery grip attachable using the new connection on the bottom of the device. As you can hear, the audio quality is very decent. Pocket 2 has 4 microphones all around the camera, so it doesn't matter whether you are in front of the camera or behind the camera. That also means that it is very important not to cover any of the microphones with your finger. Pocket 2 also offers some great options for recording audio externally with the new do-it-all handle, but I will talk about that in a separate video. The accessories are very important to the Osmo Pocket ecosystem because they greatly increase your creative options. I will make a separate video about the best Pocket 2 accessories. The good news is that a lot of Osmo Pocket and Pocket 2 accessories will work with both devices. Probably the most important new accessory is the do-it-all handle. That one basically gives you wireless connection with a smartphone, 3.5mm microphone input, a wireless connection with proprietary wireless microphone and quarter inch mount. It also kind of acts like a grip extension. This is probably a must have for those who want to use Pocket 2 for vlogging. To sum up, I am very glad that I can say that I like the Pocket 2 as much as I like the Osmo Pocket back in 2018. The whole concept makes a lot of sense in my opinion and I think that it is a great device for modern content creators. I wasn't sure about that 20mm focal length, but I think that it is a good compromise. Fortunately, the side effects of high resolution sensor in video are negligible in this case. The gimbal itself works great and I was positively surprised by the wall kink. I also appreciate the new accessories and connection on the bottom of the device. Of course, there are still some compromises that had to be done to achieve that pocket size. Those are mainly the small screen and the battery life, which is actually not that bad considering how small it is. For me, the Pocket 2 is not a direct upgrade from Osmo Pocket 1. It is more of a cross-grade. Osmo Pocket 1 is still a great camera in my opinion, and a valid choice if you prefer 26mm focal length, but I will make a separate video about that. Overall, I am very happy with DJI Pocket 2, I intend to use it a lot once the situation allows it, and I will definitely make more Pocket 2 videos in the future. So that's it for this video, thank you for watching, I hope that you liked this video and that you have found it to be useful. Stay tuned for more videos and maybe consider subscribing if you don't want to miss my future content. I appreciate your feedback in form of thumbs up or thumbs down, if you would like to ask anything or share opinion, please do so in the comment section and see you next time.